Hello everyone, this is Adam Stewart from stewartmedicine.com. I'm going to make this video to explain the concept of cardiovascular risk to patients. So there, this is a, an online tool from Best Science Medicine. I will post the link to the calculator on my website. But it's a very useful website for estimating and showing patients uh, their risk of, of, of their cardiovascular risk. So right away we see there, there are a few different uh, tools that we can use to come up with a uh, risk estimation. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to stick with the Framingham, which is the most common scale to use when estimating um, cardiovascular risk. So here we see a number of factors that go into calculating or determining a patient's cardiovascular risk. So in simple terms, uh, a person's cardiovascular risk is the patient's risk of having a heart attack or a stroke in the next 10 years. So there are many factors such as age and, and whether the patient is male or female, whether or not they have diabetes or they smoke. All of these factors go into determining a person's uh, risk of having a heart attack or stroke in the next 10 years. Um, some factors are within a patient's control, such as whether or not they smoke, but some factors are not within the patient's control, such as age or, or gender um, or family history. A patient uh, cannot control those factors. Nevertheless, they still contribute to the person's risk. So. We'll take these, these uh, risk factors and we'll just put in input some, some fictional numbers for a fictional patient here. So let's say the patient is 55 years of age. Let's say they are male. You'll see that as I'm changing the fat risk factors over here, the number of smiley faces and red sad faces are changing and I'll come back to that in a second. Let's say that the person does not have diabetes and they do not smoke. Uh, let's say that their blood pressure is 145, maybe mildly high. Let's say they're not on a blood pressure medication. And then the recent blood work shows that their cholesterol is maybe five, the total cholesterol is five, and their HDL, which is their good cholesterol, is say 1.0. And let's say this patient does not have a risk of, or a family history of early heart attacks or strokes. So if we take the, all of these factors into consideration. And what I usually tell patients is that if we were to take a, a person like this and clone them 100 times over, and we looked at 100 of their clones with these risk factors, this is the 100, these faces represent the 100 uh, clones or patients with these identical risk factors. And over the next 10 years, they can see that um, the blue the blue happy faces are those people who did not have a heart attack or stroke after the last, after the next 10 years. So 84 percent, uh, 84 out of 100 patients were fine. Unfortunately, 16 uh, percent, the 60, there's 16 uh, red and pink faces did have a heart attack or stroke, just based on statistics and probability over the next 10 years. So what this what this does is it can estimate a person's, um, an individual person's uh, risk based on on average risk factors and you can use this uh, number to carry on with further conversations about cardiovascular risk with patients you can even show a patient for example if they smoked uh, versus if they didn't smoke uh, if they went on uh, if they controlled their cholesterol or things like that with these with these risk factors here but um, more to follow in in, in the next video